Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Coffee with Jesus. Jesus and coffee. Coffee and Jesus. We might have some storms later today, so y'all are going to hear the wind blowing. The chimes, just a chiming, but to me, it's soothing. If it gets on your nerves, try to tune it out while you're listening to the devotional. But today is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. It's another day that God gives us new grace and mercy where we can spread His word, spread His gospel that someone might get saved because, look, we are waiting for that last soul to get saved so Jesus can hear from his father bring my children home son go get your bride and that's when gabriel will sound the trumpet from the command of jesus and we will meet him in the clouds that day oh that day how that day will be let me invite my mama let my mama know that i'm here but y'all come on in, come on in, uh, and I was not here Friday, and I apologize for that. Sometimes you just have to be spontaneous and take a day for yourself. We took a day, we went and, and got the boys some shoes for their birthday, got pops and boots, got, uh, just had a, a good old day, good old day in the Lord, uh, just being able to be with the grand boys and you know, being able just, you know, to be able to bask in the love and the joy that God had bestowed on us. We seen three wrecks and had to go around three wrecks. And that was a telltale sign that God wanted us to go home. So we turn around and we come home, didn't we, boo? We turn around and we came home. But Pastor Ken's over to the left. He's doing his Liberty University. So he's listening to us. So he may chime in he may not good morning beautiful alicia he may or may not but like i said thank you thank you for you know uh coming back monday as we did not have a devotional on friday but we have enough archived that you could have went back for something three months ago six months ago nine months ago a year uh and watched but we are in the process we have tomatoes laid out and we are um, going to process those today. And we, when we process those today, we will have spaghetti sauce. So we're going to put them up. Good morning, Miss Emmy. How are you? So we're going to be in, first we're going to be in First Thessalonians. We're going to start at 516 and we're going to work to 21. And we're going to be talking about quenching the spirit. Good morning, Pam. How are you? We're going to be talking about quenching the spirit. What does the word quench mean? It means to put out. And the best way that I can describe it is if you have a fire and it gets out of control or you don't want it burning anymore, you go and take something, dirt, um, water, salt, and snuff it out. You quench. You quench that fire. You you stop it well people tend to do that to the holy spirit all the time quenching the spirit god can be working in a church and all of a sudden satan gets in there there's dissension in the church and the next thing you know they're arguing over the color of the new carpet what the uh, air conditioner said on this one's complaining about this one got that job this one is serving where this one wanted to go this one's not you know there's all sorts of dissension that can that can start in the church and that's quenching the holy spirit right there because you're not allowing the holy spirit to work in the church but how about you're having a, a spirit filled sunday and then all of a sudden, Satan whispers something in your ear. And when he whispers in your ear, he says something to the fact, well, Look at her. Look at them. They just 
don't need to be here. We start being judgmental. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Barry. We just we just start being to where we're judgmental. And the next thing you know, that righteous indignation, that fleshly judgmental part on us we're sitting there judging them for the way that they're carrying their self what kind of bible they're reading good morning Brittany. and everything that is going on with them is we're going to resent them for it and then that is in itself is quenching the spirit and we don't allow the spirit to work because we should come to church each and every time we come to church expecting the Holy Spirit to be there and then and the pulling and the dwelling of the Holy Spirit we expect the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit to be there in the church we expect to be worshipers and worship the one true God that is to be worshiped God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, that trinity that we have. But let me ask you something. Have you quenched the Spirit? Has the Spirit been there in your church? Or maybe you were in the grocery store and someone asked you about God. And you just all of a sudden have that judgment. Well, you should know this. You're saved. Well, how about if they're not? How about that we treat everyone in that millisecond to witness to them like they've never heard about Christ before? And we answer their question with humbleness. We answer their question with love. We answer their question without quenching the spirit. Because it could be somebody that's with them is the reason they're asking that question and they didn't know how to answer it so they asked or posed the question to the lost person that was with them because no true friend is going to let another friend not hear about Jesus before they die you're going to hear about Jesus you're going to see about Jesus you're not going to quench the spirit and how about you bite you backsliders. You know what Jesus is all about, but because you are mad at God for some reason, you resent God for some reason. Maybe your mom died, maybe your dad died, maybe your child died, maybe you're, you lost your job, maybe you lost your house, maybe you're living on the street. Some Something happened to where it put a disdained mark in your heart. So anytime the spirit tries to move, you're going to quench that spirit. You're going to put that fire out. Because you don't want to feel the drawing back of the Holy Spirit. You know the Lord will give you over to a debased mind at that point. If you go and build up so much unrighteousness that he's just going to give more than beautiful mama. He's going to give you over to your sins. Let's look in 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, and we're going to start at 16, and we're going to go through 22. We're going to get some, some, some uh, back story on quenching the Holy Spirit. So let's start right there in 5, 16, and let's read with them. It says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. So, if you stop praying, you're quenching the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit has something for you, has that spiritual gift. You could be that prayer warrior that 1 Timothy 2, 1-7 through 7 talks about. You could be, and let's, let's jump there for a minute, 1 Timothy 2 1 through 7 and it talks about how um let's see let's see 
For therefore I exhort, first of all, all the supplications, prayer, and intercessories, and giving thanks to be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and reference. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the, me, the man Jesus Christ who gave himself as ransom for all to be testified in due time, for which I appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying, a teacher of the Gentile in faith and truth. He's telling you that the Spirit is there to be praying, praying for the ones in charge praying for the ones that are in authority you know you've got um, you've got people in our government right now that when we get our self bent backwards and we say we don't like them this that and the other we are going against what sec what first Timothy 1 through 7 says we are quenching the spirit because we should be praying for Biden. We should be praying for Camilla Harris. We should be praying for Nancy Pelosi. And it's not for them to prosper. It's for their salvation. We should not be quenching the Holy Spirit when it comes to them. We should be praying that they get saved. Because through salvation, God can do anything. They repent. They, if they hit their knees, repent of their sins, they are forgiven like you and I. So we can't quit, quench the Holy Spirit in that aspect. Because if we go ahead and read on to 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 through 22, do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise the prophe prophecy. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. And that is a form of evil when we quench the Holy Spirit. When we get so puffed up like a puffer fish that we say, I'm not going to pray for them. They're going to bust hell's gate wide open. Well, even though you may think that, even though it may be said about those people, you as a prayer warrior, you as to be there to be praying without ceasing you what are you looking at i'm waiting for you to finish your thought because i got something i want to say you my brothers and sisters of christ need to be praying for everybody everybody that's not saved whether we like them or we don't like them because we love them we should love them as christians to sinners because jesus came and he ate with the sinners we should be in a relationship a praying relationship with sinners as pray for the people that drive by your home pray for your people that are your work pray for the people in the grocery store pray for your government pray without ceasing yes pastor ken all right so something that is probably going to steam some people shorts by me saying this but when you go through a no, nah, don't put it on me. When you go through a period of being critical to everybody, and you say that term, and I know I have said it, I'm guilty of it. I've been, you know, I've asked for forgiveness of it, of telling people that somebody's going to bust gate, hell's gates wide open. I have a question: Why would you want anybody to go to hell? Literally, do you really hate somebody so much that you would want to condemn them to a devil's hell? Even Hitler, do you want? Did you want even the atrocities that he did? Think about him as a human being, not as what he did, but as a human being. And then, do you want to see him be in a devil's hell? I'm as a Christian, not from a pastor standpoint, but as a Christian, saying I don't want anybody to go to hell. I want everybody to be in heaven where I'm going to be. I don't want to see anybody go to hell. So why would I be condemning them with saying they're going to bust get hell's gates wide open? And on top of that, why would you want to bust gates, the gates wide open? Then it's going to let everybody out. <laughs> right? So that's my two cents on it. But we need, to rem we need to remember that 
hell was made for Satan and his demons, not for us. It was not made for us. We are trespassers there. We, you need to have love for your brothers and sisters out there, whether they're saved or whether they're not saved, whether they're born again, whether they're not born again, whether you consider them saints or sinners. We need to get out of the flesh when we start looking at people and you start, you're supposed to have discernment and you're supposed to judge them by the fruits that they bear. But you're not supposed to judge them as what they do, how they do it, and where their life is at. You let God take care of that. You, my brothers and sisters of Christ, if you see someone that is gay, you still pray for them, you still give them a nod of Christian fellowship. You still scoot over when they come in your church and let them sit down right, right beside you. You welcome them into your church because when they come into that church, the sins that they bring with them will fall away like the change, the change, the chains that bound them to their sin. They're in sin. They're coming to the church. They're coming to the hospital for sinners. We don't go to the hospital because we feel good. We go to the hospital to get better. Sinners are coming into the church to seek what ails them, to know what they're missing. They're being drawn by the Holy Spirit to know that there's something that can be done about their situation in this church through Bible-believing Christians that are praying for them without knowing their name, without doing this. So we need to, we need to jump back. Even if it's somebody that you think that has been saved for years and years and years, and profess to be saved. But you know in your hearts of hearts. Maybe God showed you this. Maybe he hasn't. But their fruit has never bared. Maybe they were under this illusion that they were saved. And now God is drawing them. They're under conviction. They come out from darkness into the light. And now they're in the light in the day. And God says, go here. I have people praying for you. I have people loving you. I have people that will be accepting to you. I will have people that will take you under their wing, give you refuge. That, nine, that Psalms 921 says, and that will teach you my word, teach you how to be a disciple teach you how to grow in my word our job is not over with when we witness to people when we tell people about what God did for them that's just a part of it we're to continue to pray without ceasing not pray without ceasing for things that we want but pray without ceasing for people's salvation and I know we're praying for people with their health. We're praying for people to, to extend their life. I know we're praying for people that have lost loved ones. We pray for all sorts of things. But the first thing that needs to be on that top list is salvation for all who have been under God's anointing wisdom and knowledge because when they know to see we've got technology we've got all this and there's going to come a time where God is going to be mentioned in every heart of every believer 
and everybody's had the opportunity to either A, accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, or B, not. And that's blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. But us, as Christians, us as the saved saints, us as the one that should be out there running the race, living that Christian life to be going and praying without ceasing. We are not to quench the Holy Spirit. We are not to take away that. And you know, when this came about, when, because I take notes there in church. I take notes on what the pastor says, and I take notes on what I may or may not teach on the next week. So I had my notes for what I may do this week. And then I had notes, taking notes on what the pastor says. And it's amazing how God can open what he tells you through a preacher sermon. And you have a page. You know. And that as a believer. You can't just take those words. That we need to be. Jesus' hands and feet. Jesus doesn't need anything from us. He allows us. God allows us. To be a part. Of winning souls. Of soul winning. Because when we get saved. He can just pluck us out honey. That would save a lot of things on this earth. That would save a lot of things on overpopulation. That would, that would do it. But somebody's got to teach the younger generation. Somebody's got to be the watchman. Somebody's got to be the 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 um, the uh, sub shepherd, as our preachers and our pastors are. Some people have to be evangelists. They have to be teachers and preachers out here among us they have to be the older women teaching the younger women we're never supposed to to despise somebody about their youth but we're never supposed to resent people from being old either because the older generation can teach us what we need to do if they're a christian in the ways of the lord because I, I get a kick out of just listening to the senior seniors of our church. The 75 and above. And they tell us about how it was when they were growing up. About their mom and daddy. I just sat there and I just listened. And me and my girls get to talk. And then the next thing you know I have forgotten one of my grandmother's sister's name so I have to text my mama and ask my mama what are all of Granny Betty's sister's brothers sister and brother's names because it's a way of carrying on the family tree but that's what we're supposed to do about God's word we're supposed to teach our children to be open to pray for sinners not to look at them like they have a third eyeball i know some of these this pink hair and these nose rings and these things out there make you turn your head and everything but don't judge that judge the heart and you can't judge that heart in one minute you got to get to know somebody and how do you get to know them by praying for them we signed we made a we made a promise by signing a piece of paper that you, we would pray in our daily prayers that we would pray for the people that drive back and forth in front of our church so we can let our population know that there's somebody that's praying for them no matter what there's somebody that's praying for them 
We are awesome prayer warriors. I feel it when I ask for y'all's prayers. I feel it. I feel it. I feel those prayers. But we need to pray harder. We need to pray longer. We need to pray louder. We need to pray 24-7, 365 for the lost. For the ones in our government that are lost. For the family members that I told you that came to mind. Because even though I know their actions may cause them to bust hell's gates wide open. It doesn't mean that I get a free pass and don't need to pray for them. I don't need to quench the Holy Spirit by having that mind because of the the atmosphere or the environment that they live in because God can change that. So we need to be praying. We need to be loving on our lost loved ones. Not to where it's like we're hitting them over the head with the Bible. It means that we pray. We pray. We pray. It may take us 25, 30 years worth of prayers. It may never come to fruition. But those prayers, those tears, those conversations that we have with our Lord about them, once we're gone like that vapor, those prayers still contend to be in the atmosphere, to still be in the prayer realm, to still have the opportunity to be answered. Are you quenching the Holy Spirit today, ladies? Are you quenching the Holy Spirit in your attitude and your way of thinking, well, they should know that. They should be saved by now. They've been in church their whole life. Quit quenching the Holy Spirit. If God is needed, God is needed. Salvation. There's not a time limit on when you're supposed to be saved. But we do know this. God is not a respecter of person. He will take a baby in utero home just as well as he will that 115 year old man when it's when it's your death day whether you're saved or whether you're lost whether you're under the age of accountability or whether you're not god is going to take your life force from you do you want to wake up in hell? Or do you want to wake up in heaven? I know I want to wake up in heaven. I know my mama wants to wake up in heaven. I know Miss Alicia wants to wake up in heaven. I know that everybody says they want to go to heaven. But nobody. There's a part of us that want to quench the spirit. Because we don't want to pray for those ones because of what they've done in their life they should live in hell for eternity that's not up for you to the judge sweetheart that's up for god to judge but if you are a christian if you're a born again saint of the lord you need to go in you need to be hitting your knees every day and you need to be praying for those ones that govern over us the ones that have wronged us in our family no matter how they wronged us in their family, they still deserve salvation just like you did. Jesus died for us all. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world, every person on this planet Earth. God died for them. Not for Beth Ramey. Not just for Ken Ramey. Not just for Lenora Maddox. Not just for Alicia Hutchinson. Alicia, Alicia Hutchins, please forgive me for mispronouncing your name. But for all of us, dears, he died for all of us. But have you quenched the Holy Spirit? I look back and there's times that I have. And I have to repent in them. And there's a lot of people that need to hit their knees once they hear this message and ask the Lord to forgive them 
of their sin of quenching the Holy Spirit. <laughs> sometimes my brain works faster than my mouth, and sometimes my mouth works faster than my brain. But let's go to the Lord in prayer, and let's pray for our government. Let's pray for our neighbors. Let's pray for the ones that come to and fro in front of our house, in front of where we work, in front of our church house. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, and we just pray and we ask forgiveness. Lord, if there's any sin that separates me from you, Lord, I ask that you forgive me of those sins at this moment. Lord, I ask if there's any quenching of the Spirit that I've done that I still not know that I've done. Lord, please forgive me of that. Lord, I pray for the people that are traveling back and forth on the road of 577 Cornwallis Road in Gardner. I pray, sweet Jesus, for anybody coming and going here at 105 David Circle. Lord, I pray for anybody that goes to and fro on our main highway out here at Massengill, on Massengill Road. Lord, I pray for our government. I pray for the foreigners that are coming that are being, that need salvation. Everybody that's coming in to our country, all over the world, all governing bodies, Lord, I pray for their salvation, Lord. I pray for our government salvation. I pray that if anybody under the sound of my voice does not know you as their Lord and Savior, to, I pray that today be the day that they hear this message and they ask you to forgive them of their sins and they ask you to come into their heart and save their soul. And Lord, I know it's scary giving up the life that they have but, Lord, the eternal life that they are gaining is much, much more than what they have now. We need to store up our treasures in heaven and not down here on earth. I pray for our county. I pray for our city. I pray for our small community here. I pray for our state. I pray for Roy Cooper, Lord. I pray that you convict him of his, of, of his wrongdoings. I ask you that he repents of his sins. Lord, with Mark Robinson being a preacher, Lord, I pray that Mark Robinson prays for Roy Cooper, him being lieutenant governor. I pray that Mark Robinson prays for him, Roy Cooper, in his office each and every day. We pray for our 911 workers. We pray for our our um, fire and rescue. We pray for our nurses. We pray for our doctors. We pray for the ones that are practicing the wrong religion and don't know you as their personal Savior. We pray that today we continue to pray without ceasing. That we were not going to be we're not going to cease until. We see people being saved. We're going to pray and continue to pray until that last soul is saved. Lord, I just thank you for joining us here at 10 o'clock every morning. Lord, come back tomorrow. And Lord, just please be in the message. Please be in the word. Lord, I thank you for being for you using me as your servant, Lord. Just continue to use me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Good morning, Miss Karen. Y'all remember this one thing. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. I love you and God does too. Y'all share this with a friend. Love y'all. Bye.